Hi everyone, today I'm gonna talk about how to write electron configuration of an element. What does it mean? We want to find the location of electrons inside an atom. If we go back to the structure of atom, uh, that's the atom, which is a sphere. Inside atom, the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. And in the layers or shells around the nucleus, we have electrons. That's what Bohr uh, about 100 years ago discovered, that he assumed that there are some levels around the nucleus, and electrons are inside that uh, uh, levels or shells. Later, uh, basically, uh, Schrodinger, it was another scientist, he basically discovered quantum mechanical model. Based on the really complicated calculations, he uh, basically physics, using physics, he was able, and math, he was able to uh, find the address of electrons. How he did that? He basically said that we should we need more details of the address of electron. Previously, Bohr was telling that okay, hydrogen electron is only around is like around the first shell that which is closest to the nucleus. But he didn't say where inside that layer we can find. Quantum mechanical model explains it. Explains that uh, where exactly we can find a, a specific electron. For example, if I give you my address and I just tell you I'm living in Chula Vista, you might ask, okay, so where is in the Chula Vista? So which street? What's your uh, uh, home number? Uh, and so you, you basically what I'm telling you, I don't want you to come to my home, right? So we, uh, this quantum mechanical model tells basically more details about the address of electrons and tells where we can find electrons inside atoms. What we talk about is these terms, these three terms are really used a lot when we want to talk about address of electrons, shell, subshell, and atomic orbital. What is shell? Uh, if you look at this uh, convention center, which is we assume is this nucleus, and we assume that hotel one is the one that is closest to nucleus, which is the level one, or shell one, uh, and hotel two uh, is in a, a little bit further from nucleus, and we call it shell two, and the hotel three is in the shell three, and hotel four, shell four, and so on. Until now, because we have seven periods in the periodic table, or seven horizontal uh, uh, rows, we basically, we can fill up to seven shells around the nucleus. So, so each of these are one shell. So as we go further from nucleus, uh, we add basically to the number. So N1, N equals to one, is a shell equals to one, and is closest to nucleus. And the last one, basically, which we don't show here is N equals to seven, which is the fill up the last electron in the last atom that has been discovered, or a last element that has been discovered, uh, which is element number 118. But in this level, uh, I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to talk about N up to N equal to 7. So I'm just focusing until N equal to 4. In the higher levels of chemistry, 
they will show you more about the, how the electrons are filled in higher levels of energy. Basically, if you follow the rules, as, al as always in chemistry, we should never uh, lose point in the exam. So here, okay, we said that uh, there are some uh, levels or shells around the nucleus, and as we go further, the number increases. One, one more thing that I should emphasize is that, as you know, the shell one is the closest to the nucleus. It means it's closest to the mom, basically. You know that the babies which are closer to mom, they feel more safe, they are more stable, and they are more happy, right? This is what happens to the shell one. Shell one, which is more closest to the nucleus, is more stable, and it has less energy, basically. But as we go further from nucleus, they, they are feel less stable, and they will have more energy. Like when you grow up, and, and you are a teenager, and you want to leave your home, right? You want to be independent. So that happens to the electrons too. When they are in the further shells from the nucleus, they want to leave more, the nucleus. I mean, the, their shell, and they want to go to higher shells of energy. So, okay. In the shell one, we have only one floor, basically. That's always happens. What we call the fl floor in the hotel one, we have some subshells. So let's continue. So we said that uh, we have shells, shell one, shell two, shell three, and shell four. And then in each shell, we have some subshells or floors. What are the floors? I mean, what are the floors or subshells in the electron configuration? Uh, in the shell one, we have a subshell, okay, which has only, we said, has only one floor. This one floor is called a subshell. In the hotel two, which is n equal to two, we have two subshells because we have two floors. S and P subshell. S is always first floor, which we said that the first floor always has only one room or one orbital. Second floor has always three subshells. I mean, uh, I mean one subshell. I mean one subshell, but. Uh, so shell two, in the shell two, we have S and P subshell. In the S subshell, we have only one room, and in the P subshell, we have three rooms, which we said that each room is, which here is shows as an orbital or a box, is basically associated to orbital. In the N equals to three, we have three floors, the first floor is always S, the second floor is P, which has three orbital or three boxes. The third floor is basically D subshell, and it has five boxes or five orbitals. Shell four has uh, four subshells. First floor is always S, second is P, always three orbital, D always five orbital, and F always seven orbitals. In each orbital or each room, like a regular room, hotel, hotel room, we have only two electrons in it only. The same as hotel room when you go and they say only two people are accepted in each room, uh, we can only have two electrons in each orbital or in each room, basically, uh, inside that hotel, which is here, uh, hotel one for a subshell. So again, in here, for hotel two, 
which is n equal to 2 in the first floor we can only put two electrons because it has only one room in the p subshell which is second floor in each room we can have two electrons or in we in each orbital we can have two electrons so maximum six electrons can be in each p subshell and in the again here two electrons in the first floor six maximum electrons in the uh, second floor and maximum 10 electrons in the third floor which is D subshell in the last floor here in the n equal to 4 which is F subshell we have 7 rooms which is maximum 14 electrons the P subshells elect orbitals are called P orbitals and a D subshell called D orbital, the rooms in the D subshell are called D orbital and the rooms in the F subshell is called F orbital. Okay, so these are the shape of orbitals. S orbit is because we talk about the space. Imagine how the earth in our world space is a sphere right so the same if we talk about 3d s orbital is basically 3d it has a x y and z axis and it has its own shape p uh, orbital have dumbbell shape and this is a d orbital uh, so just know the names of the and the shapes associated to it uh, you don't need to worry about the shape of the F orbital at this time. Okay, so always remember that the first electron always goes to first level of energy. Why? N equal to 1. Why? Because it's closest to mom. They want to be stable. They want to be close to mom. So always this uh, the, this s or if it's what the letter here always shows a subshell this number in front is the principal quantum number or level or shell of energy so we can even here write down we can write down here shell and uh, then the electron goes on top right of the subshell. Okay, so let's start with uh, putting the electrons. The first electrons always is better to put it on upright, like here, you see it here. Okay, upright, and it first goes to first shell. The second electron are always gonna be upside down so because electrons maximum two electrons can be in one orbital here each line in here shows one orbital so uh, electrons because are the same charges they cannot tolerate each other because they are the same charge the same charge never tolerate each other so they basically like to be in opposite a spin we call it a spin or opposite direction so you can see that here always we put the second electron upside down always in orbitals please follow it uh, and maximum two electrons can be in each orbital this is called Pauli exclusion principle the next gonna go to second level of energy which is 2s this, the third one, I mean the fourth electron gonna be opposite, so always, always I start with the first level and then I start filling up. How, until when? Until you are done with the number of electrons you have. For example, each element has its own number of electrons. 
for example, hydrogen has one wavelength electrons. So I don't need to go up to four electrons for hydrogen. Only I will put only one electron for hydrogen. So we go until how many electrons we have for a specific element. For P and D subshares, try to have full first and then start to pair them up. So first subshell will be half full and I start to pair them up. This is called the Hans rule. In the Hans rule, you first should half full the subshell and then start to pair them up. So when you draw the electron configuration of nitrogen in the, this picture that I'm arrowing to, you should make sure you have full the subshell and not put electrons each pair first in each orbital. This is not correct. I'm not gonna give a uh, correct or uh, full grade in this right picture, the D one. So let's go back to the left picture here. And which element do you think this uh, assigned to? This has 10 electrons, right? So this is electron configuration of neon. Neon. And another thing that I already mentioned is Pauli exclusion principle. In Pauli exclusion principle, uh, we should, it states that we should have maximum two electrons in each orbital and electrons should be in opposite direction in each orbital. Another way to represent this information is with orbital diagram. In the exam, I will ask you to put orbital diagram. Uh, instead of just using these energy levels, you just use orbital diagram. You're gonna use electron or the electron configuration. This is called electron configuration here. And the box with the electrons position is shows, shows is an orbital diagram. This is the filling order. In the filling order, we should, we should memorize it for the exam. First, we always start with the first valence electron. I mean, sorry, with the first level of energy, always start with the first level of energy, and we continue with these arrows. Then we go to first 1s, then 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. After 4s, we go to 3d. Please make sure memorize this uh, electron configuration. Then we go 4p, 5s, and then 4d. So it is not like you just memorize just based on the numbers. Make sure it's a little bit different from the numbering. And here, make sure follow the Hans rule. And what was the, what is the Hans rule? In the Hans rule, first electrons in the P and D subshell. First, try to be half full the subshell and start to pair up. And Pauli exclusion principle in maximum two electrons in each orbital, electrons should be electrons should be in opposite direction. We're gonna talk about it more. So let's start with helium here. Helium has two uh, valence electrons. So for the Electron configuration, I put two electrons on top of one S, which is gonna be two electrons, and I'm showing two electrons in the, uh, in the orbital diagram. So if in the exam, I ask you to draw the electron configuration and orbital diagram for helium, you should write the electron configuration and orbital diagram, which is the box in the exam. 
What about lithium? Lithium has three electrons, right? Because its atomic number is three. So we said that if you have in the neutral element number of uh, electrons is the same as number of protons. It has three proton, three protons. It has then three electrons. We start with the first shell, 1s2, and the rest goes to 2s1. Here I want you to practice C, N, O, F, and N, E. Please pause here and try to see if you can do this yourself. What was the first thing to do? Find the number of electrons in each element. So you're going to put uh, electron configuration and you're going to put valence, I mean, you're going to put electrons there. First, make sure for, uh, follow the Hans rule. If I said that in the P and D subshells, first we make it half full, half full, okay? So half full first, so we don't pair up in the first one, okay? We don't pair up. First, we put electron in each orbital until it's half full, then we start pair up. This is called Hans rule. So if, for example, you put in the carbon, Two electrons in the first orbital, I'm not going to accept it in the P subshell. Each electron should be separately in separate orbital until they get half full in nitrogen. Then I start in oxygen to pair up. So you can see in fluorine, it starts to the second orbital in the P subshell to pair up, and in neon, all of the uh, orbitals in the P subshell completely paired up. The important hint that I want to mention here is that if you have elements from 1a and 2a, they always end up with S orbital and S subshell. When you have transition metal, they always end up with D subshell. And when you have a 3A to 8A, you end up with P subshell and P orbital. The lanthanid and actinids are filled up with F and F, basically, subshell. I'm not going to give you, an in the exam, elements that include F, basically. So please only uh, try to uh, for more do example on the elements from 1 to 36. What about ionic elements? For example, here we have sodium plus. How we can draw the electron configuration for them? The only important thing we should pay attention is that if they have a positive on top right of them, we should subtract electron, uh, like sodium plus here. So sodium has 11 electrons, you know, when it's neutral. But here, because we have sodium plus, if we subtract one electron from it and becomes 10 electrons. So we're going to draw electron configuration for 10 electrons here. Whenever we have a negative charge, we should add electron, depends on the charge. Here I have negative one. So chlorine, when it's uh, in neutral form, it has 17 electron. And here it has negative charge, it becomes 18 electron. Here I should draw electron configuration for 18 electrons. What about titanium 2 plus? 
it's a, it's a little tricky here, guys. Please pay attention. For uh, transition metals, we should pay attention that always, always, for all of the elements, for all of the elements, always when you want to remove the electrons, it would be the electrons from last shell or the highest shell number. So electrons from the highest shell number will be removed. In sodium and chlorine, uh, which are basically in the uh, main group elements, it's easier because the last shell always is the last, you know, in the right side always the last one. So we just remove the electrons from the last shell. And also for chlorine. But in transition metals, it's a little bit tricky. Let's write the electron configuration for the titanium when it's neutral. Titanium has uh, 22 electrons when it's neutral. When we write down the electron configuration, we see that, uh, you know, if we, when, when we follow the filling order, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d2. Make sure to follow the filling order that I told you to memorize, okay? Now let's do the titanium 2 plus. So we remove two electrons, right? It becomes 20 electrons when we remove two electrons from the titanium. The titanium 2 plus will be 20 electrons. When we draw the electron configuration, we remove the electrons from last shell, which has the highest number. Here, the one that has the highest shell is 4s2. So I'm going to remove electrons from the last shell, which is 4s2. So the 4s2 will be removed in titanium 2 plus and electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 3d2. The number of valence electrons equals to the group number on the main groups of elements. How we can find it in electron configuration? Always look at the highest n value or highest number in front of subshell. For example, for selenium, which has 28 electrons, what if, how many valence electrons we have here? Look at the highest number in front of each subshell. We have four, right? So here we should add up the number of valence electrons. So it's gonna be six valence electrons for selenium. Always for the group 3A and to 8A, you should add up S and P uh, subshells, electrons to find the valence electron. Uh, let's talk about how we can find the abbreviated format. We talked about before on abbreviated format or conventional format or full electron configuration. How we can abbreviate this? This is called abbreviated or noble gas configuration. In noble gas configuration, we find the previous noble, noble gas of each element which is found, it, it is found in the last shell of, in, it, in the last shell of that element. For example, lithium, which, which rise at, is a lithium? Lithium is in row two or period two, right? What is the noble gas before lithium? It's helium, right? It's helium. So we're gonna write helium here, which is associated to 1s2, this helium, and we write the rest, 2s1. 
then for sodium, what is the last noble gas for sodium? Is in the last period, right? Sodium is group three, I mean, it's in the row three or period three. The last noble gas for uh, sodium is what? Is neon. So I'm gonna write here neon and write the rest of it, which is 3s1. And so on. You might ask, okay, how I know which uh, noble gas I should use? For now, I would recommend you first find the full electron configuration. Then from the full electron configuration, find the noble gas configuration. So you know that helium is two electron, right? So this is gonna be two electron that will be abbreviated to helium and you write the rest of it. The same for potassium. We know that potassium has 18 electrons. I mean, has 19 electrons. The previous 18 electrons is for previous noble gas of the potassium, which is argon. The rest would be for a swan. We're gonna write it down. That's the noble gas. For noble gas configuration, you don't need, you do not need to write the orbital diagram. Again, you do not need to write the uh, up and down arrow. This is the correct that I accept for the abbreviated format. So let's do see if we have kind of that practice for these uh, four elements. So magnesium is in uh, group 2A. Its previous noble gas is neon. And this is a noble gas, I mean the electron configuration of the neon noble gas. And this is 10, and we should write the rest of electrons after the bracket. Make sure you use bracket when you want to uh, use the noble gas. For iron, its previous noble gas is argon, and the argon has noble gas configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. And we're gonna write the rest of it after the noble gas in bracket. That's the gallium. And what about sodium? How I should put sodium plus? You can write neon or use the previous noble gas for it. I accept both of them in the exam. Let's talk about some exceptions here. Chemistry always, unfortunately, or unfortunately, has always exceptions. Chromium. Uh, E and chromium is in group six of transient metals and also group 11 transient metals, these have exception in the electron configuration. What does it mean? Uh, if you draw the electron configuration of chromium, that how, how you write that I showed you, is gonna be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and 3d4, right? But when the scientists researched about it, they realized 3d subshell doesn't like it. Uh, it doesn't because it is unstable. So what is happening? An electron from 4s is moving to 3d to make it half full. So this way, the 3D subshell will be more stable and likes it more. So the exception, chromium is written this way. I just wrote it in the abbreviated to make it easier to write, but pay attention, it's gonna be 4S1 and 3D5 instead of 4S2, 3D4, okay? The same happens for copper, which is the, in the group 11 in transient metals. Again, if you write electron configuration of copper is 4s2 and 3d9. But 
an electron from 4s, just 4s, okay? Nothing else is changes here. Just 4s is moving to make 3d more stable. 3d subshell more stable. And this would be argon 4s1, 3d10. I accept both of these is exam. If you write 4s2, 3d9, or 4s1, 3d10, I accept it. The same for chromium. If you, are, if you write uh, 4s2, uh, 3d4, or 4s1, 3d5 in the exam, I accept both of them. So, uh, but make sure you know that for the next levels of chemistry, these are these this is the correct way that they write it the exception ones okay three four s one three d five okay guys that's it for this part